And I was like, but, but, but I see all these studies. Isn't that worth something in itself? And she was like, not really. Yes, the title and thumbnail are true. I was rejected by Dr. Oz and I wanted to use this video to tell you all the story, exactly why I got rejected. Welcome back to the channel. For those of you who are new around here, my name is Michael, AKA Dr. Cellini, and I'm a board certified diagnostic and interventional radiologist in New Jersey. So like I said prior, we're gonna tell the story about how I got rejected by Dr. Oz and the Dr. Oz show. So let's go ahead and uh, get into it. Let's go. So yes, I was rejected. So here's the whole story about how this all came about, how it all got started and all that stuff. So it actually stems back from way back in like 2018 when I started my Instagram. I got my start by posting Foreign Body Fridays. And for those of you who don't know, it's basically where I would post x-rays, CTs, all that kind of stuff showing random foreign bodies in people's bodies. Now, you may be telling yourself, that's an interesting way to get a start on social media, and I kind of agree, but you know, when you're in radiology and it's not really that exciting, you have to do something to get the excitement onto the field. So that's what I did. It kind of took off and developed its own thing, and I even had a hashtag and all that stuff, and eventually I went to fellowship, and then they told me I can't do it anymore, and so I kind of stopped. However, recently I posted a video about foreign bodies, and then I posted a TikTok, and then I maybe posted a few Instagram posts here and there because I was trying to get it started up again. And then the funny thing is, one of the producers at the Dr. Oz show took notice. So now that you know that backstory, let's talk about the actual story. So one day I woke up to an email from one of the producers from the Dr. Oz show saying that they love my foreign body posts on TikTok and YouTube and that they would love to have me on the show for a foreign body segment. Now you can imagine my excitement when I opened this email, I was like, I finally made it. I'm gonna be on TV and for stuff that people told me not to post and said it was too scandalous, look at me now. So I had a phone call with one of the producers. We talked for a while about what I could add to the show because the whole point of it was that they were planning on doing a segment on foreign bodies and who better to bring on the show for that segment than Dr. Cellini. So we talked about what kind of stuff I do, what kind of images I have, craziest foreign bodies I've seen, all that good stuff. And eventually we came to the conclusion that I'd be a great fit and then they would have a car pick me up the following week. Yes, they gave me about a week notice. They said they would bring a car to my house, pick me up, take me to the studio, film the segment first thing in the morning and back before noon at my house. I was like, sweet, this is happening so fast. And then I had to talk to one of the head producers who then called me, I think like two days later. So we got on the phone together and they basically were like, what, what do you do again? And I was like, I'm an interventional radiologist. And they're like, what is that? And I was like, well, <laughs> I do image guided procedures. I read x-rays, I read CTs also, but mostly I do procedures. And she's like, so basically we sat on the phone and I was telling her exactly everything about my specialty. And I realized that she didn't really understand what I did because she's never heard of interventional radiology or basically radiology for that matter. But I began trying to tell her that, you know, I see a lot of these foreign bodies on a regular basis and how one of my prior institutions had a contract with one of the prisons and we would have a lot of prisoners come in with foreign bodies and it was like a common thing at my hospital. But she wasn't into it. She was like, yeah, but what do the patients say when you see them? And I was like, what do you mean? And she was like, well, don't you see the patients? And I was like, mm, not really. And she was like, so you're not an emergency medicine physician? And I was like, no, I'm an interventional radiologist. She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you see them in the emergency room? And I was like, nope, that's what an emergency medicine physician does. And she's like, oh, we were looking more along the lines of an emergency medicine physician. So as this phone call progressed, I obviously got more sad as the time went on, but eventually she was like, we were more looking for an emergency medicine physician. So if you know one, let me know. And I was like, cool, click. And that was that. But then as soon as I hung up with her, I got to thinking about something. It all kind of brings me back to the beginning when I started this social media, like I mentioned before. When I first started, I'll never forget, I probably had about 5,000 followers or something. And for some reason, someone reached out to me and they were like, you're never gonna make it in this field because radiology isn't sexy. And that term has stuck with me for so long now. I can't tell you how many times I've been creating content and thinking about how I can make radiology fun, how I can make it sexy. And it always comes back to that one person, radiology 
isn't sexy enough. It's not dermatology, it's not plastic surgery, you're never gonna make it anywhere, so why don't you just stop while you're ahead? And that's kind of fueled me along this crazy social media journey that I've taken, and it's always been like in the back of my mind that I will make radiology sexy, or not sexy, but at least interesting per se, and I think I've somewhat accomplished that goal. So yes, radiology isn't as sexy as a broken bone or a cosmetic procedure, but these platforms are great for learning about radiology, and that's ultimately my goal. My goal of this whole journey is to expose people to the field of interventional radiology and diagnostic radiology because it's very much a lesser known field. So yes, we don't have the sexiness of like emergency medicine or cosmetics, but I think we still hold a unique spot in healthcare. And I would like to be on one of these TV shows because I want to expose our field and show everything that we're capable of. And I think, you know, foreign body isn't necessarily something to promote our field with. However, it's a nice segue into seeing an interventional radiologist in person. And a lot of people on that show may not have ever encountered or even heard of interventional radiology. So I think it's important to get our name out there and market ourselves. That's kind of been the struggle with our field as a whole. The marketing is kind of subpar. And I know the SIR, Society of Interventional Radiology, has been doing a great job marketing IR, pushing it out to the mainstream, but it still takes time. And since we are a relatively new specialty, that's going to take a lot longer because everybody knows what a surgeon is, but if I say I do image shadow procedures, people are like, okay, that sounds cool, but don't really know what that means. And since we are involved in every single aspect of the human body, whether it be biliary, stroke work, uterine fibroids, peripheral arterial disease, we do it all. So it's a lot for someone to take in who doesn't really study our field. So the overall theme of this video is that this is the coolest field in medicine, not biased again. However, it's extremely difficult to market yourself. I come across this kind of thing on a daily basis, and I'll give you another example. There's been many times where you come across referring physicians who don't really know what interventional radiology does in common practice. People haven't been practicing in an academic setting for 30 years. Some of the older doctors may not know some of the newer procedures or even what interventional radiology is. Some people have even heard of an embolization because that wasn't around when they went to med school and residency. But this is the challenge that we are faced with daily in this field. And the whole point of my social media is to expose this field for everything and how awesome it is. The other thing with my field specifically on social media is I'm so subspecialized, I can't really talk about a lot of the current topics in the news and all that stuff. Like, I can't talk about the pandemic because that's not really my wheelhouse. And while I do know a lot about virology, infectious disease, because I had to go to medical school and residency, that's not really my place to kind of talk about the pandemic and broadcast it on social media. So if you've noticed, I don't really talk about the pandemic. I don't really go into details on the disease. It's just like, I don't feel like I should be doing that. And it's the same reason why a dermatologist shouldn't be talking about, you know, interventional radiology stuff. It's just, it's just not our wheelhouse. And I'm not an expert on virology, so I don't talk about it. So that's just one instance where it's kind of hard to get a lot of content just focusing on radiology, especially when everything that's going on in the news right now medically and healthcare wise is all about the pandemic. That's why it's difficult to kind of come up with a lot of radiology specific stuff. So I branch out into finance, I branch out into medical school stuff, and I have a lot of fun doing it. And it's not as serious as talking about some of the pandemic stuff. And you know, hopefully you all enjoy it too. So this rejection is obviously just another roadblock. But I'm actually curious if they ran that segment. Should I check? Let's see. Dr. Oz foreign body. You know, I don't know if they actually ran that segment ever because it was going to be kind of hard to do in a PG fashion for like morning TV. But either way, if they ever invite me again, I would love to be on the show, but you know, I see how it is. So I just wanted to tell that story about Dr. Oz and uh, maybe they'll have me on again. Maybe they won't. Maybe they'll bring me on to like talk about something cool with interventional radiology or social media or uterine fibroid immunization. I don't know. Whatever they want to, I'm game. And uh, let me know if you would watch if I was on that show. Nonetheless, we were rejected once. We may be rejected again, but I'm still going to keep fighting. On that note, I think we'll go ahead and end here. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed this story. Let me know if you watched Dr. Oz's show, by the way. Make sure you smash that like and subscribe button. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok if you don't already. Maybe you'll see me on TV one day. Who knows? Maybe I'll start doing like morning television shows. You know, like when they bring a doctor on for the segment? Maybe I'll do that. We'll see. Who knows? All right. See you all on the next one.